take your synapse valve off the car by removing these three and a half millimeter machine screws. One here, one here. You're probably going to have to use, you know, an L shaped Allen wrench because the, I guess it's the battery and also the intake box are going to be in your way. So it'll sit like this. You're going to need something to come down and basically get in there. All right. So pull it off the car. In order to remove this, the preload spring, you have to remove all the machine screws out of the base. These are also three and a half millimeters. Uh, if you really need to, you can probably get away with using a three millimeter. Just, uh, just be careful not to strip them out. I already have some of these already removed just to shorten this video. Um, once you get to the last few machine screws, the spring inside is basically going to push the valve off in your hand. So you want to kind of brace the valve so that, you know, it doesn't pop off or possibly bend the spring inside that, that you're going to need to use. Okay. So as you slowly open it up, you'll see this is the main screw, the main spring that keeps the valve shut. You know, so that way you don't have a boost leak. Here's the preload spring, which I already took out. It basically sits inside this little cavity here. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little piston inside. The piston is controlled by that center set screw. And as you push that center set screw up or tighten it, it basically tightens the preload spring. Uh, it just adds a little extra tension, you know, to the setup of the valve so that way uh, it doesn't take too small of a vacuum pressure to, to open it up. Um, once you have everything apart, just take the spring out. Uh, if you find that the spring is broken, you can start a ticket with Synops. Um, they'll replace it for you at no cost. These things, they seem to bind up and break fairly easily. Um, actually, Synops has gotten rid of this preload spring design and some of their new blow-off valves. So if you've gotten a recent one, it might not even have one inside. Um, but if you, if you have one of the older models and it has a preload spring, if it does break, they'll replace it for you. So just take it out, put it in a safe place. You know, if you ever sell it, the buyer might want that preload spring for whatever reason. I think on higher boost applications, it's probably helpful. But uh, with the way ours is set up, it doesn't operate very well with the preload spring in there. At least mine doesn't. Anytime I go inside of here, I always try to clean everything up just to maybe help the seals last a little bit longer. They also sell a, um, a rebuild kit for this that you can buy through Synops as well. So um, basically it replaces all the O-rings and stuff that are inside of here that seal everything up. All right, so let me clean my base. Now you don't want to remove all of this oil because um, some of that is in the valve from the factory just to keep the O-rings lubricated, I think. Okay, if you look through there, 
you might be able to make out that hole inside that cavity that basically goes directly to this port on the base so the closest port to the middle is the one that actuates directly on the center of the piston in the blow-off valve so this area that you see in the middle of the base when you remove it is actuating right on the center of the valve so as vacuum builds in that in this area it's gonna pull you know the valve um, it's basically gonna pull your valve so that way the boost can get out um, so that's why it's the quickest actuating you know port that you want to use on this blow off valve now the other port goes to the cavity that you see on the outside of the piston um, that port is sort of cut out right there if you can see it it's grooved and that goes to the outside so you can probably get away with using both ports um, I haven't even tried both ports quite frankly just because everybody seemed to use uh, just the center port and I think it does complicate things a little bit because then you have to get the exact same amount of pressure into both ports in order to have it actuate quickly um, which is I think the challenge of the design and that's why they tell you to use just this port right here to get the quickest actuation all right I'm gonna reassemble everything Basically, when I, it's, this is a lot easier if you use gloves. I know it might look kind of funny sitting at the dining room table and gloves on, but it does make it easier to hold everything together while you're doing this. Now, I'm not tightening these. I'm not going to tighten these down extremely hard uh, just because I don't want to put any pressure on any one part of the little o-rings that are inside all of those ports and around the pistons that that are used to seal all the separate cavities and the, the valve itself so I'm basically doing the same pattern that you would use on like uh, on like a valve cover you know you basically go directly opposite of the screw that you're tightening or loosening so I'm gonna go from here to here here to here there to there um, when I go to tighten it all up I'm just gonna basically use that pattern and cinch it down little by little you know just to get an even seal so everything lines up like it should Um, you'll notice that these cap screws or machine screws have um, Loctite on them um, just so they don't back out you know under vibration obviously metal on metal there's no kind of locking washer or anything like that so if you notice that one does not have any Loctite on it or it looks like it's you know thinned out um, go ahead and put some Make sure it's blue Loctite. Um, put some on there so that way you don't lose any of your screws.
All right, so here's the first screw. Tighten it down. Diagonal. Tighten it. one and then I'll probably go back and just double check the first and second one maybe yeah they're all tight okay um, this is a brass fitting you know you you really don't want to get like a nickel if you get a nickel plated fitting make sure that it's um, it's well made because you don't want the threads to leak um, you can use PTFE tape or Teflon tape. Um, they sell it at Home Depot and stuff like that. Put it around the threads. Um, I actually use an aviation gasket sealer. Um, it stays liquid and it basically seals, you know, under pressure. Just because Teflon tape is, is known to dissolve when it contacts like actually comes in physical contact with gas liquids and um, things like that can dissolve that kind of gasket sealer. Um, this aviation stuff is much stronger against that kind of stuff. So that's the only reason that I use it, but you can get away with using Teflon. Just try to put it on the threads that are gonna be on the outermost of the fitting. In other words, you know, let's, Let's say that this is this is a screw thread. Um, if that much of it's going to be protruding inside of you know whatever it is that you're putting the screw into, say it's an oil catch can, uh, you want to keep the Teflon threads towards the outside of the screw, so that way none of the Teflon tape is actually sticking out inside of you know whatever whatever valve or whatever catch can that you're putting the fitting into. Um, that way it never really comes in direct contact with condensed liquids um, that are coming out of the engine because that stuff will turn it into basically like a grimy mess um, which wouldn't be good for the car. So, um, If for any reason anybody wants to remove their filter, that is a two and a half, is that what it is? Let's see. You can get away with using a six, I'm sorry. Yeah, six sixty fourth, which is an SAE size, uh, or you can use a two and a half millimeter metric size and there's a set screw in here basically you loosen that set screw this whole you know top plus the adapter that's inside of there will pop off um, same thing with reinstalling this valve back on the charge pipe you want to use just water to lubricate the o-ring same thing goes on the top here just use water um, it should you know it should go down nice and snug but the water will lubricate it a little bit so that way you don't tear or scar the o-ring cause you know a leak you don't have a boost leak anywhere the smallest little tiny boost leak can really change the performance of a vehicle all right so um that's it i mean it, this this other um this other port on the synops you can just leave it open you know you don't have to seal it or anything like that because it's it's all sealed up inside the base of the valve itself um, so there's no reason to really seal that up um, I guess I'll do another video here in a minute and show the the routing of the um, the brake booster signal line that I used and then uh, you guys should all be set to go.